Well, this guy rolled the dice and got himself a pair of snake eyes. This thing is a 2004 Chevrolet Trailblazer. This fellow was in the shop last week or so and he had a check engine light on. I believe the trouble code was a P0455, uh, something about an EVAP system leak. Hmm. He's back today. Uh, I guess he has a similar complaint, although I don't have a service engine soon indicator. But uh, I guess I, I didn't work on this thing uh, last time it was here. I guess the story went is he showed up and he was kind of in a hurry to get it fixed and he did not want to go through a diagnostic process to verify a faulty component. And he just had us replace a part that he had provided. I think it was like a purge solenoid for the EVAP system. Uh, either way, he's still having some kind of issue with it. So what I'm going to do is properly diagnose this by smoke testing the EVAP system. And by doing so, I will verify if a leak is present or is not present. Um, I kind of do want to go back to the well for some more info. Uh, mainly why is he here, considering I do not have a service engine soon light. But I guess I'll cross that bridge in a minute. And now I'm popping the hood and getting obstructions out of my way. For those of you who are not aware, the EVAP emission system is basically a recovery system that will remove hydrocarbon vapors from the fuel tank. See, as fuel level is drawn down from the fuel pump and burnt through the engine, the remaining space is filled with fuel vapors. So the EVAP system is designed to purge those gases out of the fuel tank and then reburn them through the intake manifold of the engine, thus negating pollution levels. And it appears that this vehicle has some kind of a leak in that system. And that is what we're going to detect today. My method of detecting such things will be to tap into the EVAP and fuel tank system, plumb it full of smoke, and then visually inspect the system for any leakages that may be present. All right, pulling up codes. No codes are present. Okay. That does not help me at all. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to go back to the well and figure out what the story is here. I don't even have a, a history trouble code in here to go off of. Before I go anywhere, I'm just going to get a good visual inspection of what's going on under the hood. Just to make sure there's nothing stupid staring at us in the face like a disconnected hose or a connector, something along those okay, lines. Okay, I do see a brand new solenoid attached. <laughs> oh, you can't even make this stuff up. So uh, the guy with this truck, um, on his way here, he just stopped at the parts store and had them erase the trouble codes uh, and turn the check engine light off. I cannot uh, properly diagnose something without knowing what it is that I'm looking for. And according to the guy, the thing still isn't right and he gets a check engine light, but he also had the check engine light turned off like moments before he came over here to see. Do, 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 do. So what I'm gonna do is pretend that I don't know anything about any of this and just start all over. It appears since he's been putting EVAP parts all over this that he suspects there's an EVAP system problem. So I'm just going to smoke test the EVAP system and see what I can come up with here. Okay, let's pull this straight. It actually has a valve for the EVAP system. Let's pull the Schrader valve out and plug in my smoke machine and we will fill this thing with some smoke action. Wow, that valve is in there tight. Come on. Nothing wants to do what I want. I wonder if it's reverse thread. Let's try the other way. Yep. Today is backwards day. Now I must take care to not lose that. Okay, I'm gonna come over here and open up this fuel tank until I see smoke. It is flowing because I'm getting a little bit of leakage here at the valve. Uh, no big deal, there's still plenty going into the system. Okay, the system is producing smoke here at the fuel cap. So now I know that the entirety of the system has been filled. Now we can look for leaks. Okay, I'm going back to the scan tool and I need to command the vent valve closed. And that will seal up the vent at the back near the tank and then allow me to look for leaks. Okay, I found the vent solenoid command and I'm going to close that. It's normally open. 
And we're gonna command that off and that should seal the tank. Okay, this is interesting. We're down here by the fuel tank and this is the vent solenoid. I have the scan tool with me and I can command this open and closed from the scan tool. If you listen, you can hear the click of the solenoid. It's off. It's on. It's off again and on, which tells me that the circuit is functioning electronically. However, when commanded on, I should see some vapors being vented out through this vent right here, and it's not, which tells me physically this brand new component is sticking. Uh, I suspect we have a faulty new part that was installed in this car. And if you see here, I unplugged this line and that smoke is just pouring out, but it should be coming out of this vent valve and it's not. We have a faulty vent valve here. And I just changed, there we go, now it's working. Look at that. Okay, that's a faulty valve. Time to get a new one. Well, I guess we're gonna circle back around to one of my first, uh, first sayings on the channel and that is just because it's new doesn't mean it's good because this is brand new and like four days old and it's crap. Ah. So let's dig this piece of junk out of here and get a new piece of junk. And we'll replace this, this new piece of junk with another new piece of junk. And then we'll see if we have any different results. Uh, this is an exercise in insanity and futility because we shouldn't be buying cheapo mass-produced replacement car parts. But hey, what do I know? The problem, it really isn't choice either. There, see, there's no, uh, there's no not piece of junk aftermarket parts that are available. In fact, there's no not piece of junk OEM parts that are available. Everything's unavailable. Let's see what's in here. Yeah, that's just a filter for the vent. This is basically just a valve that lets air flow in and out of it. And it, it like, mechanically, it is failing inside, straight out of the box, brand new. Now, where my problem lies is I don't know what this guy's problem is, because he said he had a check engine light that was on, that he had the code cleared, so I don't even know if that code that he saw was an EVAP system code. I, I just happened to uh, well, I assumed that it was, and then I happened to find this thing not venting when it was told to vent. So I, uh, I hope that this was the cause of his check engine light, because if it's not, then the fellow's going to come back and say that we still didn't fix this car. And that would be bad. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, now that a problem, uh, dare I say the problem has been identified, but now a problem has been identified. Let's come out of here and put the stuff away that we took apart earlier. Uh, mostly just this valve right here and get these uh, these testing tools out of the way because efficiency, now I don't want to lose this, it's reverse threaded. And if I drop it and lose it, I'm in a world of hurt. And that would be bad. Click. Okay, good to go. Okay, uh, we got a new, new little uh, vent valve that has uh, showed up from the delivery folks. And I'm just gonna plug it, this thing back in and install it to where she goes. And that, that will be the end of this. Unfortunately, I don't have any preliminary information to go off of. To, uh, to prove the repair on this one, uh, other than what I witnessed with regards to uh, this valve not functioning when commanded. But my trouble is, I don't even know if that was the reason his light was on to begin with. So I guess I'm just uh, winging this one and uh, we'll see how the, how the dust settles when it's all over with. Click. Okay, the new vent valve is installed in its bracket. Let's get out of here again. But I am gonna key this back on and then 
command that valve open and closed again one more time just to make sure it's doing what I tell it Here to do. So let's uh, command that off and we'll reach back up and feel for this thing to see if it's uh, clicking on and off when commanded. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I can feel it and I can hear it. And the audible feedback is uh, much more positive than the other unit that was installed. Okay, so that does give me a little bit more confidence that we are indeed on the right track with this car. All right, let's start things the engine. And I'll just make sure that there's no pending codes from when I had things unplugged. And we can get this thing off the lift and out of here. Clearing any codes that may have been there, good. Still no check engine light, we're good. Powering off scan tool, power down, good. Let's get this thing off the rack and out of my shop. The electron infuser, powering down. Well, just because it's new doesn't mean it's good. That being said, we're all done here. I have supreme confidence that uh, that particular component was the cause of his check engine light. That being said, before I go, I'd like to thank all you guys for watching this video. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please communicate that to me and to YouTube by tappy tapping that thumbs up button. That is what lets YouTube know that I'm doing a good job here. And if YouTube thinks I'm doing a good job, it's far more likely to recommend my content to other potential viewers. And that's good for me. That's especially good for them. Again, I'd like to thank everybody here one more time for watching. And before I go, I have to remind myself to not forget to remind you guys to not forget to have yourselves a great day. So before you guys go, don't forget, have a great day. See you guys later. Goodbye, little silver blazer of trails. What is this? There's no one here, but the grinder is grinding. Okay.